All right, guys, so I'm going to talk to you today about the top five things that I wish I knew before I started flipping houses. And ultimately, they're probably the top five things that held me back from getting started. First, I need to get some coffee in me. Number five, money. You don't have to have a ton of money to get started in flipping houses. And I know this is holding some of you back. It held me back for years. And I tell you, when I found out that there are different ways to finance your first flip and flips, many flips after that, the whole thing changed for me. And I didn't know what I didn't know when I got started. And the truth is, there's a lot of ways that you can finance deals. So let's start with number one. One of the most popular ways to finance your flip property is through hard money lenders, right? A hard money lender is basically a mortgage company, but they're private investors and they understand the risks of house flipping. That's what their business is gauged towards. So they understand, they know how to analyze a deal and say, okay, this is what it's worth now. This is how much work it's going to take. And this is how much it'll be worth when it's done. And they know how to underwrite the deal based on that. And they'll lend on properties that are in really bad shape. Now, when you're using them, you're going to have a higher interest rate. It's not like a standard, you know, three, four percent interest rate like you might be getting right now on a, a mortgage. It's a, typically a much higher interest rate, maybe 10, 12, even 15 percent if you're brand new. If I'm going to take this journey with you, 10 percent is not enough at all, sure. given the risk. Here's my offer. It's the only one I'm going to make. And that's OK. That's just the cost of doing business. And I still use hard money lenders every single month in our business. We still use them on a regular basis. So that's a great resource to have a hard money lender on your team. And that is one way that you can finance a flip and bring only 20, 25%, you know, depending on your lender. Some lenders might not even make you have a down payment. It just depends on who you know. So hard money lenders are built for investors like you and me. And so that's an incredible resource to be able to uh, discuss that. I've got a great hard money lender that I use and they're nationwide. Feel free to reach out and I'll connect you with them if you like. That being said, another way that a lot of people like to finance deals, and I've done this as well, is through private money, right? A lot of people like to refer to this as OPM, right? Other people's money. And there's a good chance, I would bet, that if you uh, needed to get $100,000 or $50,000 or $20,000, right? Whatever it is, that you could reach out to somebody in your network today and get that money. And the thing is, I think a lot of people are uncomfortable having this conversations with people that they know. It might be family. It might be a close friend. A lot of people, you'd be surprised, you know, how much money people have socked away in investments and in their savings, especially some of the older folks, you know, in your family that have just invested for years and they've done well and they've, they've got investment money just kind of sitting around. You'd be surprised, too, that a lot of them are not making great returns on their money. If they've got it in a bank, they're making half a percent, right? So... We can provide an opportunity as investors to borrow money from somebody and pay them a great return. So I've got private money investors where I pay them a very nice return on their money. They're very happy to lend to me, and uh, I'm happy to have flexible cash that can help fund my business. So private money lenders are a great resource and a great opportunity for you to get started in flipping. And look, I guarantee you that somebody in your network has some money laying around. And that's how I got my start as well. I borrowed some money from some close family members and uh, they got a great return on their investment and they still invest with me today because they make good money on their money and uh, they know it's in a safe investment like real estate. So all that being said, you don't need a ton of cash to get started. You can borrow the cash. You can partner with somebody if you need to partner with somebody who's got the money. You can work with hard money lenders. There's a lot of ways to get the money, right? You don't have to have a ton of capital to get started. Number four, construction knowledge. Guys, I would consider this a pretty major renovation. And I'm telling you right now, you don't need to know everything involved with doing a major renovation. The truth is that you're going to have a lot of people involved. You're going to have a lot of professionals, guys that know exactly what they're doing in their trade. And so we've got, you know, major stuff happening large amounts of plumbing and electrical and framing and you know even in the biggest renovations there really isn't a need for you to understand how every little detail works 
the truth is that you don't need to know everything right away. You're going to learn this stuff as you go, right? So the important thing is, in the beginning especially, just hire qualified contractors, right? Just hire guys that know what they're doing and get referrals, right? You don't need to know how to uh, install all the plumbing in the house, right? Because you're going to have somebody else doing that. So it's not important to understand and know every detail about how it's all going to work and how am I going to get this house from point A to point B. Ultimately, um, you're going to develop a team of people who know how to do that, right? And so hiring right key players, whether you're hiring a general contractor who's going to manage everything, or if you're hiring subcontractors where you're going to manage them and be the project manager yourself. Either way, you're going to be relying on other people's expertise. That house we just walked out of, I have spent very little time there um, because I'm hiring subcontractors, I'm hiring people to come in and do their trade. So there's a drywall guy that does his thing, a plumber, an electrician, an HVAC guy, right? Guys, you don't have to know all the intricacies and every detail about everything that those guys do. You just need to get the right referral for the right people and then let them do what they do. And so don't overcomplicate the construction piece. Number three, I wish I knew that I didn't have to buy an area that I didn't want to live in, right? And I think a lot of people struggle with this when they start looking at house flipping and they go, oh, that looks like that's a good deal. The numbers work, but ugh, I don't like the area, right? I don't want, I wouldn't want to live there. Like that's not a neighborhood that I like, right? A lot of us kind of struggle with that mentality. And the truth is you need to let the numbers tell you whether or not it's a good deal. Let me tell you right now, I'm standing in a house that we just recently flipped and it's in a neighborhood that I don't particularly love. It's okay. It's not a terrible neighborhood or anything like that. I just, I wouldn't want to live here. But just because you don't want to live there doesn't mean that somebody else doesn't want to live there. Clearly, there's lots of people living on this street and in this neighborhood. Even though I don't particularly love it, there's nothing wrong with it. But it's just not an area that I love and it's not a neighborhood that I really love. It doesn't matter. Somebody would love to live in this area. So what you need to do is look and see how fast the properties in this area are selling. There's no reason for you to be stuck on buying deals in your own neighborhood, right? That's going to limit you in extreme ways. And I'll tell you what, I have bought a lot of properties in areas I would never want to live. And I just didn't get good feelings about and I didn't love everything about it. But we've made a lot of profit on deals where I wouldn't want to live in the house and I wouldn't want to live in that neighborhood. So don't get hung up on the emotions of the property, right? Look at the numbers, the data, not drama, right? Don't let your emotions get in the way. You've got to make decisions based on the numbers. Number two, I wish I knew that I wasn't alone. The truth is when you enter in any entrepreneurial endeavor, you might feel like a lone wolf. You might often feel alone, like you're by yourself. Because usually when you start a business, you are by yourself. You don't typically start with a big crew and all kinds of employees and stuff. You typically start on your own. And sometimes that can feel kind of lonely. It's really important to have the right support system for one, to encourage you to tell you that you're doing the right thing and that you should be doing what you're doing. And so it's super important, in my opinion, to have either a spouse or a friend or a brother or somebody who can encourage you and say, hey, you're doing the right thing. The hard work is going to pay off. And if you're not around people who are doing that for you, you need to get around a different group of people. Right? It's very important to be around people who are either doing what you're doing or at least supporting what you're doing. Super important. The other thing is that there are people who know what you don't know. So it's super important to be networking with people. And in the beginning, that might be agents, appraisers, hard money lenders, other flippers. Right? There are people who have been through what you haven't been through. There are people who know how to specifically underwrite the numbers, people who know how to do the things that you, when in the beginning you don't know how to do. So you know, I, I know how to pull comps, right? I know how to like look and determine what the value of property is now, but I didn't at first. So I leaned on a real estate agent that could help me with that process. And I still lean on my real estate agents to this day, right? I'm not a lone wolf in this business. I'm still reaching out to people, you know, my selling agents who will uh, give me an idea, give me, you know, hey, what's what what is this house? What's the ARV, right? What's the after repair value going to be on this thing? And um, I don't want to trust just my own judgment. I'd like to have a counsel, right? Have other people counsel and, and other people um, help me determine what it's worth. So multiple opinions are great. And you can do that. Look, same with hard money lenders, right? You are not alone. If these people are going to invest their money in your deals, you better be sure that they're going to underwrite the deal and make sure that it makes sense. So a lot of times, you know, if the deal is bad, your lender probably won't lend you the money. 
So remember, you're not alone in this business. You've got a support staff. If you don't, you need to get one. You absolutely need to have a support system around you so that you've got people encouraging you. And if you don't, get into networking groups, right? There are lots of groups of house flippers and wholesalers and landlords and all kinds of people that, you know, they network together and they discuss um, deals and they discuss, um, you know, best practices, right? These are called masterminds and uh, REI meetups and all kinds of things. There's all kinds of ways that you can network with other people who are already doing what you're doing. And that's who you need to be surrounding yourself with. And the number one thing that I wish I knew before I got started, stuff is going to go wrong. And that's just the truth. You can do everything within your power to have everything lined up perfectly. You could have the financing lined up, the contractors lined up, your comps are pulled, your ARVs are tight. You know exactly what's going to happen and how this project is going to go. And I guarantee you, something is going to go wrong. And that's okay. Something goes wrong on almost every house that I flip. Sometimes it's a bigger deal. Sometimes it's not a big deal. The truth is that you've got to learn to deal with problems as they come. You've got to be a problem solver. It is a mentality. You have got to have rhino thick skin to be in this business because stuff is just not going to work out the way you think it's going to. But the truth about all this is that it's still not that risky. I'm telling you, it's not. I've had deals where they felt like they were completely falling apart. One example, I had a house that I recently did that we had completed. Everything went well. You know, we get towards the end. We realize, man, we're over budget on this by quite a bit. Like we, you know, we were like 20 grand over budget, more than we thought we were spending on the rehab. And then, you know, we're like, all right, well, it is what it is. We're going to make a little less. So we put the property on the market and it gets snatched up right away, which is great. So we're under contract with a buyer go through the inspection process, take care of the inspection items like we always do. No big deal. And then the unthinkable happens. About two weeks before closing, a property inspector shows up at the property and he calls me and says, hey, um, how do I get into the house that somebody's living here? And I said, no, 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 no. No, nobody's living there. Um, it's vacant. And, um, you know, we re rehab the property. It's under contract with the buyer. It's vacant. Nobody lives there. He's like, no. Yeah, no, somebody's living here. There's definitely somebody here. Can't be. Can it? Or is your entire world just crashing down all around? <laughs> like, you got to be kidding me. Long story short, somebody put the property up for rent on Craigslist. And this woman, I'm not sure if I believe her. But she claims that she rented the property and handed the guy six months worth of cash to stay in this property. I did a background search on this woman. I don't think she's telling the truth. But long story short, she literally over the weekend moved everything that she owned into this property. She's got six kids and a baby daddy or two that are in the house. And so we've got a full family of people living in this house, brought all their furniture in, and we're under contract to sell this property with the buyer. Well, long story short, they were not willing to leave, and I was going to have to do an eviction, which at the time, when I applied for the eviction, they told me it's going to take six weeks before I could even get a court case. I'm like, this is crazy. This is just absolutely nuts. Well, this was in August, and so we ended up going and cutting the line to the air conditioner outside in the middle of the night. And fortunately, that worked. They said, she called and said, hey, um, this is way too hot. I said, well, look, why don't I give you like 2,500 bucks? You go ahead and, you know, leave. I'll give you 2,500 bucks if you can be out in two days or three days or something. And so that's what we did. We had to go back in and the place was filthy and we had to repaint a lot of the walls. We had to do a lot of cleaning. We ended up closing on the deal and everything that went wrong with that deal, we still made $7,000. Now, Seven grand, not my best deal. Certainly not even close. However, if all those things can go wrong and we still make money on the deal, look, this is not that risky of a business. I know people like to talk about house flipping, like it's really risky, you know, and, and a lot of your family is like, oh, you shouldn't do that. That's too risky, you know what I mean? What if, what if, what if this goes wrong? What if that goes wrong? What if the contractor runs away with your money? What if this happens? What if the uh, pipes are bad or what if the electrical is bad? Look, it's not that big a deal. You're overthinking it. So guys, these are the things that I wish I knew before I got started. I'm telling you right now, if you're sitting on the sideline thinking about getting started and flipping, please don't wait any longer. Don't wait for the time to be perfect. Don't wait for you to have a bunch of money or wait for 
um, you know, the market to do whatever you think it's going to do, just get going, right? You're going to make mistakes along the way and that's okay. And uh, if you have any questions, please reach out. I'm here to help if I can. I'm just, I'm doing this because I'm super grateful. I'm really thankful that I got started in this business. I love what I do every single day. I love that I get to do this business for a living, right? Having a job was the worst. Owning a business and working with the people that I love and doing what I love and creating is the best. So I'm just telling you, if you are thinking about doing it, don't wait any longer. Don't uh, procrastinate. Don't get stuck with uh, analysis paralysis because you could wait another five years. You could wait two or three years like I did and just wish that you had started earlier. So anyways, guys, that's it. And I will catch you on the next one.